Calistrito. Ah, I don't know what happened, Frank, but here we are. Here we are. How much time we have left? We got five and a half minutes. Oh, okay. So how you doing? I'm doing well. Happy Go Lovely, man. Happy Go Lovely is the movie for the night. It's a 1951 British musical. With the Joker as John Frost. Yes, yes. It's uh, Cesar Romero. And uh, every movie needs, in my opinion, an over-the-top performance. Some guy who's hamming it up and getting away with it. And in and this movie, that is Cesar Romero. He is kind of a hassled uh, theater producer whose show goes from one problem to the next, and he, he throws himself into the part. So he's, he's the lively thing about it. He's about uh, 15 years away from playing the Joker, uh, and he's about, that's, that's ahead of him, and behind him is uh, about 20 years of playing Latin lovers and that type of role. He was Cisco Kid in the, in the movies, and, and uh, he was, in a sense, he was the last of the Latin lovers, because uh, the Valentino craze had pretty much played itself out by the time he came along, but uh, he started making movies in the early 30s, always cast as a tall, good-looking, somewhat sinister or dark uh, Latin lover. That's the role he had in the original Thin Man, a kind of small role. He occasionally played exotics. He played, uh, he was the, the uh, Indian chieftain, uh, not the American Indian, but the uh, India of India, and we and Shirley Temple's Wee Willie Winky, which is a, sounds like a silly name for and a Shirley Temple movie, but it is really a good movie, and he was very good in it. Well, and you know, very good in it. I'm going to slip this in. I wish that um, that Batman movie with Michael Keaton had Adam West... Cesar Romero and Frank Gorshin and Eartha Kitt in a serious Batman movie, you know, that would have been tremendous. But alas, we can't go back there. No, we can't do that. I mean, the, you're right. The, the TV series was a bit broad. It was, it was it, it drove for overstated comedy here and there, whereas the uh, Tim Burton Batman was very dark. And it, I remember my son was six years old when that came out, and he was looking forward to it, and it scared the hell out of him. It was, it was not a movie for children. No. So, and, yeah, you have something there. Now, David Niven, did he appear in that strange James Bond movie, the original Casino Royale? Yes. In fact, he was Sir James Bond, uh, a retired secret agent who's named James Bond, and there's a, you know, there, are, there are a couple of people in, named James Bond in the movie, including Woody Allen as Jimmy Bond. But yes, he was, he, was, uh, he was an early, Jane, well, not, I'll just say early, uh, Sean Connery was there before him, but he played in a spoof of James Bond, Casino Royale, which I haven't seen since the week it came out. I went and saw it in New York City. When I was living in New Jersey then. I went to New York and saw it at, at its premiere theater. And it's, you know, it's a farce. It's a big budget, uh, over-the-top movie. And you don't see Niven that much in it, but you don't see any one person that much in it. It's all, it's all over the map. And it annoys me. So when I see it on TV, I watch a little. I've seen bits and pieces of it, and I've never watched it all the way through. I can't. Yeah, well, it doesn't really, I mean, it has, I shouldn't say it has a plot, but it doesn't really have a, a, a strong narrative that makes you want to see it begin then. So you can watch it piecemeal. Uh, David Niven is, in this movie, is playing the kind of role that we associate with him, the suave charming man and and, it, and I was as I was reading up on this movie I was reminded of one of my favorite quotes uh, Mae West was asked about the men she knew in Hollywood and she said David Niven had charm the rest of them just had cologne oh that's and, funny. Uh, but he was but he wasn't really famous yeah I mean he was he was well known he had name recognition but he was not a star and he was not he was not the, didn't have the iconic status he has now that that lie ahead of him and he had been in movies for uh Let's see, he's about 40 years old in this movie. He's made. He's been in movies for well over 10 years. He's, he's, he's done time with Warner Brothers and, and uh, bounced around Hollywood a bit. And, uh, but his real, his real years of stardom and the, the, the movies we associate with him, Guns of Navarone, the Pink Panther movies. Uh, his, he won the Academy Award for Separate Tables, so, so you can walk around a long time in a place like Boston before you find anyone who's seen that movie. It, it, for some reason, that just doesn't pop up. To I haven't. Uh, is Barbara Cooper the grandmother of Bradley Cooper? Uh, not that I know of. I know, just but, uh, she, funny. She doesn't spell it that way, but, you know, the British often don't spell things the way we do. And uh, Val Guest. Why do I know the name Val Guest? You know the name Val Guest because he's in a little bit almost everywhere, but he, he did a, he's the writer of this movie. And, uh, but he, he's mainly remembered today as a director of some decidedly offbeat films. 
I guess his cult classic is the science fiction movie The Quatermass Experiment, which some of us, uh, we in America, know as The Creeping Unknown. But he, he directed... Uh, and that was a, a part of a series. Excuse me? That was part of a series. Quatermass was part of... Um... Yes, I, I know he directed the first one. Let's see, I'm going to click on the computer to see if he directed the second one. And we got 15 seconds left, Frank, so it's a good movie, right? It's a good movie. It's a fun movie. It's, it's lightweight. You're not going to change your philosophy of life by watching it, but it'll get you through the night and you'll be happy you did it. All right.